So the process that I get frustrated with is when I've made mistakes and I know I can help the customer and they, you know, they tell me they want to think about it. So in Ego Drive, okay, this mm -hmm. is to, with reference to Ego Drive, I will walk out with another salesperson, this classic example, and we will look at each other and say, they're so stupid they don't even get it. Yeah. That's our first. That's called ego. That's protecting ourselves. We're yeah. protect By the time we're in our car, we start talking about what we need to change in ourselves yeah. so that we can better meet the client's needs or the prospects. In that case, it's the prospect's needs. Okay. That is critical in a sales. If a salesperson, and I'm going to tell all of you out there this, if you are high in sympathy, get out of sales and go into customer support and service. Mm -hmm. Sympathetic people try to change the way you feel. And when you ask for someone to move forward in a sales environment, remember that I have identified needs you have, you've agreed you want a solution, and the only way you're going to get it is to sign the contract. Yeah. You can't get it any other way. Yep. Okay, so if I can't get that to happen, you can't get your solution. Yep. My ego drive is going to overcome your negativity. My empathy is going to say, I totally understand what's happening here, and I feel the way you, I, it's feel felt found. I understand how you feel. I had lots of clients that felt the same way you did, but what they found is, is when they work with me, that I take care of the things that, quote, you're concerned with, and then we don't have that issue, so why don't we move forward? A sympathetic person will put the agreement back into their purse or their briefcase. I've watched it I've been on thousands of sales calls. Mm -hmm. And they will change and start saying, this is how to feel better about what you're going through. Yep. And they will not work for your company anymore. And the last thing I will add to you as a question, how long does it take a salesperson to stop selling for you and start selling for the customer or prospect? That is a great question. How long does it take a salesperson to walk out of your office oh, and start man. selling for, the, for, for someone else? You're making me think about this one. I'm going to say a couple, couple, I'm going to say six months. Okay. How about the first call? So check this out. No one thinks about this. Mm. John, if we can do this, he'll buy. That's selling for the client. Mm -hmm. You talk to my daughters. I literally get upset all the time. I'm like, quit selling for everyone else. Get back on the page. Think about what we're doing. Page, you, get back on the page. Page, get back on the page. <laughs> 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 right? Like, we're not doing that. Okay, because we are confident in our knowledge and we know that this is not true. The client is not right. Scott Hardy is on record telling you, yep. I have not met a client that is right yet. True. I have found clients that have been told they're right for long enough that they think they know it. But all I have to ask somebody is, when's the last time you passed the real estate broker's exam? Right. When's the last time you were in a two and a half month training on technology for credit card payment systems? When's the last time somebody showed you how to read your credit card processing statement? Yep. Never. Never. Well, then why are you telling me? Well, I'm polite. I say please and thank you. And I'm going to keep my word. And my word is, I'm going to teach you. And whether you go with me or not is irrelevant. You're gonna I never have to worry about a well-educated customer. I have to worry about customers that I have that are not fully educated. Right. Uh, uh, customers that are not fully educated are swiped away by people who aren't very educated either. True. And so when they team up, disasters happen. So you need to take control. You need to be the leader. You need to be firm. And you know, you, you know if you're going to deal with me, I'm going to test you. But the good news is as a sales pro, you don't have to do that many things right in front of me yeah. to make me buy from you. True. I'm really kind of a pushover when it comes to <laughs> buying stuff, you know? You did one yeah, right okay. thing. I'm like, all right, you can have the sale, you know? And so yeah. uh, That's awesome. So, yeah, I mean, I think obviously there's a lot of good information that within this podcast. I mean, we're, I think we're this is definitely something that we are going to be continuing doing. If we yeah, could. I think it's good to talk. I, we, the reason why I like your format, and sure. I think it's important for people to listen to this, whether you're in sales or not, because A, if you're in sales, you're going to learn how to sell correctly, because you're probably not. And I'm going to tell you straight up, I don't have a very high respect for real estate agents, because most of them, I mean, the, COVID was a blessing in this one sense, that if you were cutting hair and you had your real estate license and you were a cosmetologist or anything, you're out of business. Right. Thank you, people. <laughs> we had a situation where the lady worked at Macy's during the day, and she's upset at us because we're blowing up her phone, and she won't respond to the text because, you know, she's in the she's lingerie section show. selling a bra right now, and she can't be bothered. Right. The problem is, your $650,000 loan is going down the toilet 
toilet and the, you know, the other agent is saying, if you don't provide the paperwork, we're canceling the sale and we can't even get a response out of you. So I'll tell you two things, people, that you need to remember. You need to use a local agent and that means neighborhood specific. Right. Real estate is a neighborhood industry. Mm -hmm. It's not a national industry. How many, how many people, this is the funny thing. So a lot of people will think like, I got to go, we're, we're in the Riverside County area. Right. But somebody will think like, I got to go find somebody from LA County to go list my house in Riverside County. Like, yeah, that's a really bad idea. And I'll give you an example. I'll give you a real life example. And I benefited from it. And I've been complaining about these agents my whole life. And now I'm like, oh, well, thank you very much. Yeah. So we had a piece of property that we knew we, we had many lot listed in what's called infill. Infill is when you have a neighborhood with one lot, let's say, and you would fill in that lot. That's infill. You know, the home's going to sell. So this is what we do on the side as a family. We'll buy a lot and then we'll build a house and we'll sell it off and make a little extra money here. It's just kind of a, you know, fun little thing we do. Sure. Well, guess what? We are on a budget. So I can't go over, uh, I, in this case, I couldn't go over $150,000 for the land. Well, what happened is all that land where I wanted to buy it was two twenty five. dollars We had the listings. We knew. We knew the market inside and out. Mm -hmm. And we found one for, it was actually one hundred seven. It was down to one hundred seven. It started out at two thirty. And Man, over two and a half it. years, that's because, no, this is Temecula, California. Mm -hmm. The I agent was from Lancaster, California, and a friend of the property owner. Do you know what I bought that $230,000 piece of land for? Because they didn't have the pin in the map correctly. They had it in Marietta. 95. 103. boy. So I just bought about. 10 acres that across the street... Four acres sold for $950,000. This closed last month. That property had the pin in the map in the wrong spot. And if you went and looked, it was a hole with a bunch of oak trees and a river. And, you know, you have the fishing game to deal with. Nobody wants to try to build there. You can't build, right. you can't cut down the oaks. Okay. So remember, across the street, last month, $950,000 for four. And I closed the month before. What did I buy that 10 acres for? which has been on the market for four years, and I looked at it five years ago and couldn't afford it. Right. <laughs> okay? Because it was over a half a million dollars for that 10, which if you look at four at 950, that's a deal, right? Right. What did I buy it for? 105, 103? 130. 130? On a golf course. Perfect. Between the ocean and Temecula. This is what happens, people, when you pick the wrong agent. True. If you pick an out-of-town agent, if you're in San Diego and you drive up with your agent to look at homes in the Temecula Valley, you're not going to really do too well. No. They, they don't, don't know understand. the market. We have different loan limits. We have all kinds of regulations that are they different than San market. Diego, Orange, and L.A. County. Right. Riverside County is its own beast. And I will to leave you with this. If you don't understand the power of our community and the power of the Inland Empire, let me explain this. If I said to you that 4 million people were in Oregon, which is true, and that there's four and a half million people in the Inland Empire. That would make the Inland Empire the middle state of the United States. Mm -hmm. California is the third largest economy in the world. Right. And the Inland Empire is the third, or excuse me, is the middle state of the United States. Put that in perspective. So you're going to come up here with someone who is a part-time agent from another area into the third largest economy and the middle state of the United States where the relentless desert has met the relentless builders. <laughs> and you're going to try to pull something off. And I can tell you, when my wife and my daughter have done more transactions than ever before, we're having more success than ever before, and every house has 20-plus offers, that means there's 19 agents that are going out of business every transaction because they can't get their offers accepted. Right. And the offer is not always the most expensive offer. It's the packaging, which you know that we work with you to position the, the buyer better so that the seller knows this is going to go through because somebody can offer you 10 times what you asked for your house, <laughs> take you down to the last minute and then bail. And now what are you going to do? Because when We've a home falls out so of escrow, times. it's the scarlet letter yep. and it is plagued and it will never get the price it did before. Right. I don't care what you do. I can always buy it for less. And when I buy homes, I look for homes that fall out of escrow. Oh yeah. Cause those are the deal homes. Oh. So don't wreck it.
Plus, they've been on the market for however long. There's something's wrong with this house. You're chasing it because what happens? I mean, this is. I'm just going to add this. I know it wasn't really the topic of today, but what happens is when you meet with a real estate agent to sell your home, and you tell them what your home is worth, and they agree with it, that is the red flag of the century. Yeah. Run! D don't don't look for someone to tell you what you want. That's not research. You can go find anything you believe on the internet, exactly. good or bad. Listen for someone that's going to tell you something new. And then you're going to say, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, well, if you price your home wrong, let's just say you put it $10,000 too much on the market. By the time you sell it, historically, you'll probably sell it for forty grand less. Yeah. Because you're chasing it. You're always behind. You're always behind. You're always behind. And the time's going to catch up to you. Do you have to move quickly? Then you price it to sell. If you don't, then go bigger, yes. But understand... If your agent can't show you why, it's called comparables. Your house is worth what someone will pay, and historically, in the last 90 days, they've paid this much for those types of homes. So I don't care if you put $350,000 into a home entertainment system or 70 grand into your pool. You're only gonna get 20 on your pool, no matter what, if you're lucky. Right. It, it doesn't matter. I put a new car stereo when I have special rims. Who cares? It's blue book, buddy. It's not going to change. <laughs> exactly. You're not getting your money out. And that's how real estate is also. Right. Absolutely. So. Well, I love it, Scott. Well, I think right now we're going to go ahead. This one's been going for, for some good time. We got a lot of good information. Good. If you guys are in the sales game, I highly suggest that you tune in to us because we're going to keep this thing going. We're going to be talking about a lot of different sales techniques, everything else. Uh, this was our first official podcast. We got the podcast room set up. We got our producer, James it's Watson. really nice. Really nice. We're going to get the video and everything else as well. So, Scott, I appreciate it as always. This was a Remember, pleasure too. nothing happens until somebody sells something. Absolutely. Absolutely.